All right, everyone, welcome back to this video. Uh, this is going over section 9.2, and we're going to get a little bit more in-depth with the fibrous joints. The bones in a fibrous joint are connected by fibrous connective tissue. There is no joint cavity between the bones. And we're going to talk about three types of fibrous joints, sutures, syndesmoses, and gonthoses. So let's talk about sutures first. All of the bones in the skull, except for the mandible, which is the jawbone, are joined by sutures. Sutures strongly bind the bones together, which is good because it protects your brain. Skull sutures don't allow movement between the bones, so they're classified as synarthroses. In adults, the gaps between bones are really small, but in infants, they're much wider, and we call those fontanelles. Um, those are the wide gaps of connective tissue which we call fontanelles, but you've probably heard people call soft spots, like watch out for that baby's soft spot, right? Um, they're useful because during birth, they allow for infants' heads to be able to squeeze to move easily through the birth canal. They're going to really uh, greatly decrease in width during the first year after birth and as the brain and the skull bones enlarge. Once they come close together, we call them sutures. At some sutures, the connective tissue will ossify, which just means it will turn into bone from connective tissue, and that'll cause the adjacent bones to fuse to, together. That fusion is called synostosis. Okay, let's talk about syndesmosis. Um, syndesmosis means fastened with a band, and that might make sense in just a second. A type of fibrous joint in which two parallel bones are united to each other by fibrous connective tissue. When the gap between bones is narrow, they're joined by ligaments, and when the gap is larger, it's filled in by this broad sheet of connective tissue that we call an interosseous membrane. I'll show you a look at that. Here is the, tibi uh, the tibiofibular syndesmosis. Here, <clears throat> between the tibia and the fibula, we have an interosseous membrane as well as two ligaments. And this uh, together stabilizes your uh, tibia and your fibula to uh, parallel bones and allows for those bones to carry the, the weight that you put on them. Syndosmoses uh, found in the forearm and leg serve to unite parallel bones and prevent their separation. However, they do not prevent all movement, some more than others. So the one in your legs uh, prevents much more movement than the one in your arms. Um, and that's for a good reason, because you want a little bit more movement in the arms than you do in the leg, which is weight-bearing. Um, so that type of fibrous joint is functionally going to be classified as an amphiarthrosis, meaning that it, can't, it does allow for some movement. All right, let's keep moving. The last thing I want to talk about is a gomphosis which means to fasten with bolts. It's another specialized fibrous joint that anchors the root of a tooth into its bony socket uh, within either the upper jaw, the maxillary bone, or the mandible bone, the lower jaw. You'll sometimes hear people call this a peg and socket joint, and just think about the tooth as the peg going into the socket of the, in, into the bone. These are immobile, so we are, they're classified as synarthroses. And basically what you'll see is that spanning between the bony walls of the socket and the root of the tooth are going to be numerous short bands of the con connective tissue, and each of those is called a periodontal lig ligament. Here's a look at what that looks like. So here is the bone of the, the jaw itself. Here are the ligaments, the periodontal ligaments that span between the, the bony wall and the tooth, uh, the root of the tooth. Here's the gum tissue, and here's the crown of the tooth that you uh, see inside your mouth. 